Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Chris. Lord, we just thank you today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for bringing us here today and keeping us alive. And Lord, we thank you that your Spirit will open your word to us today and help us to walk and to grow in it, to know you better. Lord, we do pray for the situation and things in the world today. And there are very... Uh, things that we don't understand and things that are critical and Lord we just ask for your wisdom and helping us to embrace and to get a hold of these things and we do uh, pray today that you would really allow us to see you in a different perspective than what we have had and it will grow continually each day by what you do in us in Jesus name Amen <clears throat> We're going to share today about faith, but what belief and trust is, and talk about it from a biblical standpoint as well as from a personal standpoint of what belief and trust is to you as an individual. The Bible is very clear in that there is the existence of what the Bible calls faith. And it's something, it is a key ingredient in knowing God and being able to embrace who he is and what he has for you as an individual and as a creation being in this world. It's actually impossible if you don't allow faith to play a part to really know God. Now you can know about him, but you can't really know him without faith. It also shares in the word of God that faith is actually something God has equipped us human beings to have. And we are specifically are going to talk about that faith that he gives us that allows us to really embrace him. It shares that there is a measurement that God has given to all of us. I used to think when I read that years ago that that was more about quantity than quality. I believe it's a mixture of both and it's definitely a difference. One thing that is really unique about belief or faith that I have to have faith in order to really have a true relationship and who I say I believe in. And it takes a little bit more than me just knowing that as an actual fact that God exists. We know that Satan and his kingdom of darkness know for a fact that God exists and it took him a while to accept that Jesus, the son, actually came here on earth in a body. Because even when he went to Jesus, as though he was still wrestling with, could this really be God in the flesh? And he challenges Jesus to try to prove that reality. But we also understand that when Jesus was talking about faith, he mentioned that a little of faith in a particular group of people that he was talking to, he kind of chastised them a little bit and said, oh, you of little faith. But then there's another part in that same time that Jesus taught, he used the same term and says 
that a little of faith, a mustard seed of faith, very small, can move mountains. That used to really kind of freak me out a little bit. Because in one minute, we're looking at it that I don't have enough of it. Yet Jesus says, just a little of it. That's where I begin to embrace that it has to be about not only, so I won't say only, but it also has to include a measurement of quality versus quantity. Okay? And quality, a little, can be very unique and very powerful. But in the quality of having a little of it in the quality of it can produce very little. There was a person that came to Jesus and says to him, can you heal my son? Actually, it was a group already trying to do that. Jesus shows up. And the man says, Jesus asked him, do you believe? And he said, will you help me? Not with my belief, but will you help me with my unbelief? So already he's qualifying that there's a part of his belief needs some help in order to agree with what Jesus asked him in, do you have faith? So we see that God is really not threatened or challenged by the little of quality, I mean quantity of it, so it doesn't take a lot, but he wants you to have a depth in the little that you may use. Now we can say that means maturity. So when we first start out as Christians and just come to a small amount of being able to say, I believe that God exists. And the more that I read or hear because the Bible is clear that you need to read and hear in order to advance in your level of faith. But as I keep allowing my faith to mature, it will help me embrace the greater picture that faith can produce. I also understand, too, that just because I have faith doesn't necessarily mean that I can trust what I say I have faith for or in. So there's a level of trust that you also have to bring to that table as you embrace this faith that I'm also going to have to trust because I'm dealing with something that I don't really have the evidence of what I'm having faith for at the time I need faith. So it's not that I really got the evidence of it. So I'm kind of wanting to believe for it before I actually possess it or see it. It is very critical that I add trust to my faith. And it's kind of like a picture frame that if I don't put something in that frame, it doesn't mean that the frame doesn't exist and it doesn't have some level of value. But once I really put something in it, it does increase in the value because I'm using it and it, it gives me a joy or whatever I got in that frame. So these two are meant to work and come together.
I also believe in both belief and faith and trust. There are some other elements that need to come to focus, especially when we're talking about in God. One of them, I believe, is meant to add to that is your emotions, your senses that you have as an indivisible. Because each of us have different, we all have the same senses, but we have different expressions of those senses that God has given us, emotionally, especially. I can have the kind of faith that I believe in God, but I treat it more like a trophy. It is part of the accomplishment that I have trusted in God, and he has done some things. After all, he's given me a new life, and he's working that through me, and I realize that God is in me, and I know him. And I can kind of go around knowing I feel confident that I trust God and I believe in him and I'm saved. And that's a wonderful place to be. But then when I have to really come to a part of my life in a day that where that isn't quite enough. Now I have to start there. But I have a situation that I'm facing where now it is activating my emotions. Especially if it's a loved one that's having a problem and I want to engage in faith and asking God to minister to this situation. I now have to bring my emotional part of me into this. I have to not just look like it's a trophy that I have, but now I actually got to activate it and begin to move in that realm. And the, one of the wonderful things about believing and having faith is this actually can create an atmosphere. And in that atmosphere, it begins to do things in me, in my natural thinking, and in maybe even in my uh, physical part of me, but definitely in the spiritual part of me, it begins to be stirred up. And I have to look at the situation and see, am I willing to go beyond what seems natural and real? especially when it's a real situation and it could be even life or death type of a situation that I'm believing for. So I have to go beyond the facts that I might have heard from the doctor or from my eyes looking at the situation. So I have to go beyond that and step into a atmosphere that comes from God because he gave his faith. It is part of our new nature as we have the Holy Spirit in us. And it is part of that nature of God that is a fruit of the Spirit and it's called faith. Then I begin to move in that realm, allowing God to move in that realm to help me go in a atmosphere that I need in order to really have faith for the situation that I'm asking for. And I realize that this is no longer has anything to do with me, other than, you know, I'm engaged in this uh, atmosphere, but it has nothing to do with me and creating the atmosphere. It is understanding that God is the author of that atmosphere. And he's allowing me because I am asking him to be a part of that. Now, I don't believe that it necessarily has to be a person that believes in God. I know and heard testimonies from people who really 
haven't had a real connection with God. Uh, obviously, at that moment or before they had to acknowledge that God exists. It might have took that situation for them to even go there. But it is something now that God is willing to bring forth because he wants you to know him. And he's going to engage that part of faith in you, that measurement, even though it's very little, and he's going to kind of like make it so you now, even if you're not a believer, you even now have stepped into this realm and you can realize that you have something that you didn't have before. And then you go into this situation being stirred up that your faith now is where you are beginning to want it and when you want to believe for this. Even though the facts say, this is a bad situation. But all of a sudden you feel a part of you being stirred up. That is that atmosphere of God staring up to you and bringing you into a realm where he moves in his faith. And when you come through that, it definitely helped you now to have a greater level of trust because now you've been in an experience with God and he's made it personal for you. He's taken it out of the Bible pages that you believed and he stepped off in a personal experience that you're connected, whether it's a friend, whether it's somebody personal, whether it's yourself. And now he's brought you into a level that maybe until that time, you wouldn't even aware that you had that in you. Okay? I mean, it wasn't like you knew you had, and I'm not saying that you can't, but I'm talking about right now where you accept that you didn't realize you had that kind of faith. But it is resident in what God has put into you in that measurement of faith. That now, because of relationship, even though it might be the first time that you found yourself calling out to God, I mean, again, it could be the very first time, but you called out and God met you there. And it now has opened a new door of perception that you now can look and see and have the experience and evidence of what God can do. I believe that God wants us to step off even into another greater realm of this faith to where you start expecting God's going to do something. And you begin to let that expectation, it begins to water the spirit person that you are. And it begins to give you boldness that you didn't even realize you had. And it begins to help you make a stand as a person that now is walking in a very deep quality of faith. And it is in that realm, not how much of it, but the quality of it that can help you move a mountain. That can help you to bring something that doesn't really exist into a natural world. And it's just that atmosphere that Jesus said, he has given us the ability and the privilege to walk in through a relationship and prayer that you can pray for things and see them come to pass. Sometimes in a very supernatural way. I personally yet have not seen this, but I have no people.
and heard and read testimonies of people where they have witnessed. I think Pastor Rick, if you hear his story, where they witness a supernatural miracle happen to them or to someone they know. By facts and natural laws, it defied that being something that could happen. And yet God took you there in that atmosphere and he helped you see this be produced. Now, it is something that is now added to your trust factor because you have now experienced, you know someone that had experienced some things and you've heard their testimony and it's helped you now walk in a greater level of trust that comes from experiencing this atmosphere that God has given us that he calls faith. It will take you if your faith begins to move in this atmosphere and it will make you take some bold steps that you probably don't want to take but you realize God is in this. Right now in this time that we live in our community, not necessarily right here in this region, but in this community of our country, there's a person who has been in contact with God through prayer. And he's been praying and encouraging others to pray. Maybe just to thank God. They really haven't discussed what they're really praying about. But he stepped off into this level of this atmosphere and he's praying and believing God. And it's motivated other people to step in it with him. To only realize that there are laws in the land that say you can't do that where you're doing it and when you're doing it. Yet there's something still motivates you to not necessarily that you want to challenge the law, but you can't help but be motivated to not to back up. Because that you now have with this living God, and especially his son Jesus, and especially the teacher, the Holy Spirit, is now bringing you into that you have made a decision that you're not backing up. And it's not that you want to go through all these changes. It's not that you're trying to prove a point. But it's the fact that you're being motivated because you're caught up in this atmosphere of God. And you know it's real. And you know God is meeting you there. And you can't help but be stirred up by the expectation of what God can do. I believe we're coming into a time where God is going to increase our faith level. I think he wants us to start hungering for him. I think he wants us to begin to understand that when Jesus came here, he opened some doors of faith that allows us to change our environment. And he's staring us up today to where you even catch yourself and you're starting to even amaze yourself that you are willing to go there in faith and reach out there. And you're starting to realize what the man asked Jesus to do and helping his unbelief, God is doing that to you. And he's helping you. I mean, you've always believed in God. You were taught that as a child. So you never really wrestled with that. Yet now you're realizing that you're in a different way. 
And you're wondering, how did I get there? Not that you don't want to be there, but you're wondering, how did I get there all of a sudden? And it's so real. It's like it's really tangible. And it's got you dancing, and it's got you jumping around. And somebody said, you're changed. And you look at him, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> and it's just faith. It's just now staring up in you. The expectation is like popcorn. The seeds start making noise. And even though it's in the bag, it just keeps bouncing and, and wanting to come out. And it's like God is starting to do that with his people. He's starting to want to bring us into this realm because there is a world right now that is being attacked by the demonic kingdom. And he's trying to purposely stop the people of God. He does not want us to walk in that realm because he knows his kingdom. He knows he's subject to that realm. Because if he's all that, why didn't he do away with Jesus when he had him out there in the desert? When he had Jesus uh, being 40 days, all he could do was try to dilute the word. And now God is bringing us into a reality of a body of people around the world where the word is coming alive in our spirits and faith is beginning to have that expectation in us and we're beginning to feel like we can't get enough of it. And we're stirred to where you catch yourself and you say to your co-worker, uh, excuse me, do you mind if I pray for you? You can remember when you were afraid to ask your co-worker what time of day it was. Because you were afraid, she said, don't bother me now. And you would be offended and you would be hurt. But there's something staring up in you now where it doesn't matter. It's not that you want that to happen, but it doesn't matter. And it's like you can't keep it in. And God is saying, I'm releasing that on my people to walk in the fullness of the measure of faith and what it can do. And you can take a little bit of faith or I can take a lot of mature faith and yet find myself in the same arena no matter whether it's mature or not. Because it's God and he's the one that's in control here. He's the one that's staring up this level and making us and wanting us to be pulled into it. And Jesus said, there are coming a time when you realize I am the life of you and it will flow out of you. And there is this level that's flowing out of us and it's making us realize how great and how powerful God is. But all that is in the realm of faith and trust. And God is wanting us to stay there. He doesn't want us to leave it. Even if I'm not necessarily engaged in a combat issue with the kingdom of darkness. Or with someone who just not sure what they believe. And God is allowing us. That when you come into an environment, it's like the wind. People don't see it, but they feel something moving. They feel like something has changed. And then they notice something else. I never start thinking like that until Diane shows up or until Dave showed up. And I used to be irritated. Because they always talked about they believe. All of a sudden they're catching themselves wanting, wanting to know more about what you believe. That sometimes they even say, um, if you get around to it, will you pray for me? And it's not really in what we're doing as it is who's doing it in us. And this is, I believe, the greatest time 
for us is to embrace that atmosphere that's called faith. And to trust it. Because if I'm honest with myself, how can I deny the evidence of what it's doing in my life? I used to wonder whether I was saved today because I'm still struggling with smoking or with whatever you're struggling with. Yet at the same time, I'm now beginning to understand that even if I'm still learning how not to do that, my faith is beginning to still be where it's helped me move into this realm. And I realize yeah, I need to keep working on these things that does not make a good witness in my life. But I won't let that stop me from embracing this new excitement and anticipation that I'm waking up to. And it's like God is waiting there for you to wake up to say, we're going somewhere today. I am going to take you into another level for me today. And you are going to move in this realm that will motivate people that you don't even realize are watching you because of your faith. I believe there's coming a time that even in this little congregation right here, that we can be praying and when enjoying the faith we have in God. And we're going to start realizing that our neighborhood is beginning to change. And we're going to know in our spirit it's connected to the faith that we're now embracing and the expectation that we're believing for and expecting. And even when people come in here, that we know may be hurting and dealing with things. We are still willing to go over there and hug them with the reality in my mind that as I hug them, this level of faith that's on me may get on them because it's contagious and God wants it that way. And the more I trust it, and the more I embrace it, what limits can it not have? What can it not do? And will that not help the world who seems like they're trying to do everything they can do to not accept God? They're willing to change the laws, they're willing to change everything they can change so they don't have to accept this God. And it's like God knows that if they stay in that level of their understanding, they're destined for a place that was not designed for them. God did not design hell for mankind. He designed hell, the lake of fire, for the devil and his dominion, his kingdom. It wasn't designed for you. God's all-knowing. God knew we would fall. But he still didn't say, I'm building hell so when they fall, they'll go there. What he was doing was, when they fall, I'm going to already die for them that they have a chance to be able to be renewed back to me. And that I'm already equipping them with the faith that it'll take for them to embrace the work I've already done. Now is the time that God is excited what his church 
those who believe in him are going to be able to do in that realm of faith that he has and is working through us. Does that not excite you? Does that not make it clear that I'm not saying that you shouldn't be concerned about how strong your faith is. I think you should. But it's more important to rest in it than it is to be concerned how much you have. Because if I just rest in a little of it, it's amazing what God can do with it. Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this time. And God, I really do pray for this atmosphere to continue to grow in us. Continue to motivate us to embrace you in ways that we never imagined. But you are there and it's your Holy Spirit that keeps opening that window, that keeps staring us so we can walk in trust and in faith and that our belief gets stronger and stronger. And yet, with all the qualities of love that you are making us, we're willing to go out compassionately and embrace the world. Not in a way to condemn them, but in a way to encourage them, in a way that will help them embrace you and the faith you have for us. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.